The ultimate PowerShell experience is here. And I've been working on this for the last couple of days. And one thing with PowerShell is I love the experience once you've taken out the, the craziness of, of Microsoft and you've made a lot of like easy aliases to where you can get around and navigate your prompt. I've already made a video about like Zoxide navigating instead of just using CD. And this one, I really wanted to kind of take it to the next level with PowerShell. A lot of times things get out of date in Windows. And one thing I wanted to do with my PowerShell profile is one, automatically update it. I'm tired of going out and checking and then going, okay, let me load up my toolbox and then we'll update PowerShell or maybe I'll click on the update from PowerShell and the Windows update and then have to click through a couple boxes. None of that. I just want it to automatically happen. And I've made some big changes to the actual profile itself. So on launch, what I do is let's say I launch PowerShell. What it does is it goes out, checks for any profile updates, downloads them if need be, and then also checks for PowerShell updates. Now in the past, this could cause loops if you didn't have an internet connection or anything like that. But uh, with this giant refactor I've done of my base PowerShell script, the first thing I would do is do a test connection to github.com. If you can't resolve github.com, it'll go ahead and skip, obviously trying to look for a profile update or doing a PowerShell update because all this is done from GitHub. And if you don't have an internet connection, I don't want it to just sit there and be like, I'm waiting for an internet connection before launching the PowerShell because a lot of times troubleshooting the internet is done on a PowerShell prompt. So I wanted to make sure that was still there as for capability. Obviously integration of like terminal icons and adding a lot more error checking into this profile. So when it comes to terminal uh, icons, oh my posh, Zoxide, all these cool tools that I show in all my videos and how I navigate around, well, let's say you load this profile and that stuff isn't installed on your computer or there's a big update and it's a different version or whatever. I put error checks into one, either install it if it's not there already, or update it if it's out of date. So it'll just automatically do this for you. So there's no problem with actually loading. It does make the load process a little bit longer as I have been sitting here looking at that, but it's usually between uh, one second to two seconds for a launch and I'm okay sacrificing that as long as I can maintain everything and not have to go out and find stuff. Because usually I just leave this prompt open and then navigate back and forth between the different tabs I have going. So if I'm on like Z-Web and then I just do a git pull, this is usually how I manage my stuff. As far as like certain aliases I've set up, I usually set an alias for Vim and that Vim will translate to NeoVim if it exists or pvim or regular vim or vi or code or notepad plus plus sublime text or even notepad if it doesn't have anything and everyone has notepad so that's how i've like set up the editor uh, alias in here other big aliases it's like finding files sometimes sucks because of powershell you know how it's set up like if i'm over here and i'm like gosh i need to look for oh let's go youtube what what do i have for youtube okay those are all the YouTube articles I've written on my website and their full path names. Uh, and it just makes it way easier than trying to do get child item and then recursively searching using this crazy command where it's just so much easier with these aliases. If I want to grab my public IP, I can just go get dash pub IP. I'm not going to bother running that just because, well, <laughs> it wouldn't show much because I got to blur out that. If I go uptime, this is a Linux command, but it shows when this was actually launched. You can see just recently I've uh, launched this system. If I have any changes to my profile, I can also just go reload profile. It just checks for updates and then reloads everything. Unzip commands, I just added that. Again, most of this is Linux based stuff. Uh, another thing that I really wanted to do was have a proper hay spin. Whenever I'm doing live streams over on Twitch, I'm like, okay, or Titus Tech Talk, if you're a YouTube guy uh, or gal, this is what I want to do. I want to be able to easily share code with you, the audience, quickly. And I don't want to be able to like copy paste into like a, a paste bin online or something like that, or, or having to do like a GitHub gist. It just takes too long. And, and when I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's jump over to PowerShell. In my PowerShell profile, I have these different things. Now, 
I've changed my entire profile around, but let's say I want to send you the current profile as it is 201 today. Uh, I'm just going to go Microsoft PS1. What this is going to do is upload it to my Hastebin servers and then give me a shareable URL. So if I click on this, it launches into bin.christtitus.com. We're going to go ahead and hit continue. And this is going to be my entire PowerShell profile. And I, I, I was using ix.io and then it, that moved on to Hastebin, but then they got bought out by a different company. I've gone through a bunch of different services and all of them keep getting shut down. So I'm just like, you know what? If you, they can't do it, I'm just going to host and do it all myself. So if you do want to use my Hastebin server, you can, bin.christitis.com. Uh, it's all unsecured. It, it don't put anything here that's sensitive because it, it could be shared with the world, obviously. But I made this just so I could share code easily with everybody. Uh, obviously, if it gets abused, I'll have to take it down. But I think uh, for the people that watch me and that want to use this, have at it should be good. Uh, I don't I don't anticipate anything. I threw about 100 gigs and pay a little bit per month just to host everything on this server. But I wanted something to where I know it'll exist. And if it doesn't exist, I'm the one that took it down. And that's why I created my own Hastebin server. But also I made this Hastebin alias. So I can just do HB in the file name and it'll just share it with you. So if it's a, a source file or something like that, I can just make that and send it directly to anybody in chat or in, in a YouTube video, I could easily just do that if you wanted to download it directly. And then just some other uh, Linux stuff like uh, DF, if you've never used disk free in, in Linux, uh, let's just go DF and you should see uh, all the current files and how much size each drive has and how much space is attached to each one. Which command, it just kind of gives you a detailed layout of commands and where it's at. Export, this just gives you a, a value. So you want to export a, let's say, editor to change that global variable to something else. You can do it with the export command. By default, you have to do this set item, or maybe you go like sysdm.cpl and put it directly into Windows permanently. You could do it that way. And then adding pkill and just a head and a tail uh, for just grabbing like the first lines of a file or the bottom lines of a file. These are just really basic commands that are everywhere in Linux and I use them all the time, but I really miss them when I'm in PowerShell, but no longer because this profile kind of takes care of that. Uh, I have a couple other like just shortcut keys. Most of this could be taken care of with Zoxide. This is probably overkill, but it's there in, in case I need it. And then an LA and an LL uh, for a long listing with hidden files. And then the LA is probably just a, a, a regular long listing as regular. So it's showing that, like here's an LA and then an LL. So the big thing here is the LA. I, I really use LA a ton and I love just the listing icons. These are actually terminal icons and I might need to change my font a little bit on this system because it doesn't look like it's pulling in some of it. But uh, another thing too, when you're doing like a set execution policy unrestricted, you notice how the font gets colored as it's going through. Well, that's because it says, okay, this is a command. We're going to yellow that. And then it actually colors the command as you go through. So it makes it way more readable. Uh, here's a whole bunch of git commands. I like to use like lazy G for doing commits. A lot of times uh, we have flush DNS. So easy to flush your DNS, which you do all the time in Windows. But here's the PS read option. I added this for the coloring of a commands yellow, a parameter is green, and then a string is just going to be that, that dark cyan color that you saw. And then finally, pimping out the prompt, making it look good. And that's where the Oh My Posh comes in. And for that, I always set, I, I like to use Windows Terminal or WT quite a bit these days. In settings, under defaults, go to appearance, and then you set anything to like a nerd font. I'm just going to go to downloads from nerdfonts.com. And you can kind of pick out any nerd font from here that'll have like all the next stuff. Uh, Cascadia Co is probably the my next favorite one. So I'm just going to click download here. All right, with all those extracted, what I like to do is just highlight all, uh, oh, highlight all, right click, and then just say install for all users. If you don't have that install for all users, you have to go to advanced and, or show old options uh, because you're on Windows 11. And with that done, these should be 
installed now on the system. So I'm going to close out of this, come back into our terminal. You can see we have this old font. Let's relaunch our terminal. Then we're going to go into our settings, defaults, appearance, and now, oh, here's, here's the nerd font that we want. We want Cascadia Cove nerd font mono. Save that out, close, and now you can see our nerd font. Now if we hit LA, you can see we're a little bit better. Let's go to power LA. And now we have proper, uh, if you're using terminal icons like I am, that gives it these pretty icons, Cascadia Curve Nerd Fonts, probably one of the best fonts out there. Even though on Linux, I'm still a Meslo LGS Nerd Font fan. I can sit here and talk about fonts for a while. So let's, let's just wrap this up. I love this. Hopefully you use it. If you want to see the source code or just fork it and make it your own and do this for you, not having to rely on my updates, or let's say you're like, oh, Titus, you're doing something weird with this. I, I just want the profile and then do it. Fork my GitHub project. Just come into github.com, Chris Titus Tech, PowerShell dash profile, and then just fork this project, make it your own. I want you to steal this stuff. It's so much better than having to go and manually update things. I also made and redid the entire startup script. So I refactored all of this, but the actual setup.ps1 should do most of what you need. The only thing that you, you still should probably set as defaults is going into like Windows Terminal and setting that default appearance that I showed already in the video. But the rest of this, it'll install Zoxide for you. It'll go ahead and install like terminal icons and a lot of the modules that you're going to need to make your life livable on PowerShell. I don't know how anybody can deal with the stock PowerShell experience, especially, you know, the old PowerShell, much less PowerShell core like we have with 7 here. And this should make everything for you, set all your profile to where it is, do a Winget install of Oh My Posh. And then refactor it, it. I've tried to install Cascadia Code nerd, nerd font as defaults here running the setup script. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on your system and Windows configuration. It can be a little finicky, but I wanted to show the manual method as well. Uh, but this, there's a good chance this will work as well. Overall, I have enjoyed uh, making PowerShell livable because I really am in PowerShell a ton when I'm on Windows. I can't live without my PowerShell. I know some Windows guys like, blasphemy, the CLI is just for Linux users, but when you really learn PowerShell on Windows, it's hard to do a lot of stuff manually because some, some crazy people like come in here and they're like, okay, I'm gonna go to settings and then I'm gonna slowly find, where's the search button to get back to the home feature? Oh, is it in system? And I don't know, a lot of this just seems like pointless. Like changing the network out. You'd have to come into here, find your, your network. Uh, where's that at? And then go into ethernet and then slowly find it. And then I'm like, you know what? It's just easier to do. Give me an NCA CPLE and then sit there and modify the connection directly. Uh, ah, just so much faster. <laughs> Anyways, this is, this is starting to become CLI superior to GUI. And I don't want that. Uh, sometimes GUI is good for some stuff. But for a lot of things, I'm still like, give me the command line any day of the week. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.